Tabua, and 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 Tabua, Bula FM. Bula FM. Good evening, this is FBC News. I'm Akusito Pale. Government accuses FTUC of sabotage. PM reminds disciplined forces to work within the law. And tropical cyclone Ula leaves $70,000 bill in Southern Lao Group. Leading our news tonight, the Fijian government is accusing the Fiji Trade Union Congress of continuing to thwart industrial relations in Fiji by demanding to be the only union represented on the Employment Relations Advisory Board. The government says Union General Secretary Felix Anthony put this non-negotiable condition before joining IREB. Farzana Nisha has more. The Fijian government is adamant that Fiji Trades Union Congress General Secretary Felix Anthony demanded that no other union be included in the Employment Relations Advisory Board. FTUC threatened us. They said, if you call FICTU, if you call FPSA, if you call any other union organization, we will not participate in IREP. That's the bottom line. That's the truth. There's correspondence to prove it. Every single meeting of IREP has been recorded. And the recordings of IREP meetings will be given on a stick, digital stick, to the uh, mission when it comes on Monday. There's nothing to hide. Said Kayum says the government gave in to the FTUC demands because it wanted the labor issues resolved. So given the fact that government had given an undertaking in Geneva that we will have amendments to the law to repeal ENI by August or September of last year, we relented. We said, okay, we won't call anybody else. FTUC, you come through. You have the F uh, FCEF, FTUC. And, uh, government. Once the government agreed to the FTUC's conditions, meetings were held and consequent amendments to essential national industries decree were passed in Parliament last year to comply with the International Labour Organization core conventions. The government called more EREB meetings, but the FTUC continued to make similar demands. So, you see, FTUC is not the sole repository of worker representation in this country. They are not the sole repository. In the same way, Fiji Employers Federation is not the sole repository of all employer organizations in Fiji. IREP is supposed to be an inclusive organization where you hear from a range of organizations and voices, and then IREP makes a recommendation to the Minister for Labor. That is why the Minister for Labor is never part of IREP. When contacted, the FTUC General Secretary Felix Anthony did not deny making the demand. Yeah, I mean, they, they may have correspondence, but that is no secret. I'm, I'm saying this now publicly, that FTUC is the most representative workers' organization in the country, and that we are the ones who ought to be representing workers in Europe and no other. The government will be meeting with the ILO Trapatite mission that arrives in the country tomorrow. Razan Anisha, FBC News. Meanwhile, the government is looking forward to holding talks with the International Labour Organization mission. The visit is aimed to resolve issues specific to Fiji. Attorney General Aya Sayed Kayum says the government has nothing to hide from the mission as it is in full compliance with the ILO conventions. We look forward to this mission. In fact, we welcome the mission. Because our biggest agenda is to make sure that we have economic growth rate in Fiji, make sure that we reduce poverty levels, make sure we create jobs, sustain jobs. The ILO mission will meet the government, unions and employee representatives during the visit. 
Prime Minister Vorenge Bainmarama has reminded the members of Fiji's disciplinary forces to follow the law at all times. Speaking at a combined church service in Suva this morning, Bainmarama said the role of disciplinary officers is to protect and serve all Fijians. <laughs> More than 100 members of the Fiji Police Force, the Fiji Correction Service and the Republic of Fiji Military Forces gathered with their families for a three-hour church service at the Vodafone Arena in Suva this morning. Prime Minister Vorenge Ben Marama told the officers that their job is not an easy one as there will be times when they will come into contact with the worst of human nature. Your challenge is to deal with this resolutely but without compromising your own humanity. Laws that protect the accused also protect the security forces. They help ensure that we don't rush to judgment and convict the wrong person. And they help ensure that the security forces can descend into the world of the criminal and emerge with their goodness and humanity intact. Bainimarama says Fiji has a multicultural society and the disciplinary forces must be willing to understand and learn from each other. If you keep your minds and hearts open, you can bring out the best in all Fijians and bring out the best in yourself. You will be very sensitive to this diversity and will respect it. And this mindset will go a long way to help our nation grow and unify. The Combined Church Service has been commended as a great start to the calendar year, sending a message of unity, service and celebration. Of course, it is your duty and your challenge to adapt and to change, to do battle against the threats to the Fijian people with new knowledge and new technology. The three disciplinary forces have been reminded that even though they have different roles and responsibilities, they all play a major part to ensure the safety, security, defense and well-being of the country and all Fijians. Tropical cyclone Ula has caused over $70,000 worth of damages in the Southern Lao Group. Ali Kimbia was part of the impact assessment team that visited the affected areas and filed this report. The impact assessment team, led by the National Disaster Management Office, visited villages in the Southern Lao Group throughout the week to assess the damages caused by tropical cyclone Ula. The team, which also included senior government officials, apart from carrying out the assessments, gave out food rations to various villagers. As far as the, the, the impact on the ground, there was not much uh, damage uh, on infrastructure in terms of uh, household, uh, um, nursing stations, uh, jetties, airstrips, but the only impact on the ground was uh, related to crops, uh, food security of uh, local communities here in Lao. Potoa Island was the most affected by tropical cyclone Ula and Eliki Masa says they will decide on further assistance after a report is presented to the NDMO. But all this will be, be part of the report that will be uh, tabled uh, to the National Disaster Management Office. Uh, they, are, they will take it up to high authority for funding and for this is further decision making uh, by high level authority. Food rations distributed to the villagers are enough to last a month only and Masa says more supplies will be distributed before time. Alikimbia. FBC News. The Health Ministry has also been found to be notorious since the Finance Minister Ayaz Sayed Kayum. He says it's not only the Education Ministry that has come under the radar for alleged deception. Sayed Kayum says the Ministry has also developed a tendency to send in last minute requests for waiver of procurement of medicine. He says this has been an issue for some time now, despite the Ministry knowing that the medicines will soon expire. This is a, a good, good ploy, as far as they are concerned. When you send something at the last minute, then the Ministry of Finance, uh, Procurement Office, and the Minister says, well, you know, we need to get the services out to members of the public. Obviously, we cannot have people without medicine. Obviously, we cannot have people without textbooks. So let's give, grant them a waiver. A uh, 
bit of a... The minister says they are looking at reviewing the Fiji Procurement Office. Sayed Kayum says this is, a, this is because the staff have a tendency of just regurgitating whatever the ministry sends to them. Still to come, more residential units to be developed this year. And I love Mirchi FM. Hi, my name is Sonny from Canberra. I love listening Mirchi FM online. I am Urmila Devi, I am from Tawwa. I am Shandil and Ashnil. Tawwa is locked in the Tawwa. I am from Tawwa, Mirchi FM is hot. I am Shelly in Tawwa, no sorry. Mirchi music simply been dance in no sorry. Mirchi FM, Mirchi FM, Mirchi FM, Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM. Welcome back, this is FBC News. Housing will be the main focus for the Ministry of Local Government, Urban Development, Housing and Environment this year. This has been confirmed by the Minister as the demand for better housing continues to increase. Fijians can expect more housing developments this year following the Ministry's goal to meet the demands of the people that need permanent residence. Minister for Housing Parvin Kumar says they will work with the Housing Authority of Fiji on this. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, land security is very important. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, we are witnessing now. Uh, this is the government's uh, directive, government's wish uh, to see that people have uh, land security. Five squatters will be developed into residential lots, of which three will be in the west, while two will be in the central division. This will benefit more than 3,000 families. The subdivision that we are going to carry out uh, uh, where people are currently sitting we're not going to move them, we're not going to push them here and there. Uh, we will do a subdivision whereby they can reside in that area and we will try to peg around the houses, so without any disturbance. Parveen Kumar says the ministry has thousands of applications pending where people are requesting for land to build permanent homes. Access to more than 10 factories and warehouses in Walu Bay outside Suva has been enhanced with the completion of the Amra Road. The 303-meter-long road linking Forster and Freeston roads has been reconstructed by Fulton Hogan Highway's joint venture. Operations manager Central Field Toom says the crew used a milling machine to remove the damaged surface, and this material will be recycled for use at other work sites. The road surface was then treated with a cement stabilization process, followed by a chip seal layer. The 9th World Supermodel South, pa South Pacific was held at the Pearl South Pacific Resort last night. Miss Australia Elena Carter beat 11 other entrants and was crowned the winner. Carter will now represent the South Pacific region at this year's World Supermodel pageant held in South Africa in March. I'm in so much shock. I, actually, I didn't expect to win at all. So I just came in to meet these amazing people and maybe get something out of it, but definitely not to win. So I'm in a lot of shock right now. Other finalists included Poppy Shkoka, who is the senior runner-up. Mirasha Rarasea was crowned World Teen, and Michaela Powell was awarded the Teen Runner-Up title. Diamond Lange was awarded Best Dressed. Age does not matter if you are determined in life. In tonight's successful Fijian segment, we bring you the story of 71-year-old Noah Kepa, who has ventured into sandalwood farming. Ali Kimbia has more. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Noah Kepa of Nukuni Village in Onoilau has been a laborer in various farms all his life until he decided to quit and become his own boss. I was working in Suva and I went to work in the farms in Waimbao, Doli Suva until I met my family one day and decided to ask them if I could come to the village and utilize the land on the island. Moving back to the island five years ago, Kepa invested in one of the most expensive trees in the world, the sandalwood, locally known as the Asi. He brought the seedlings from the agriculture ministry and planted them in over three hectares of land. <laughs> When I came to the village, I saw them not making use of this yasi plant, so I bought more yasi seedlings and told myself that I'm going to make use of our piece of land. The yasi tree takes about 10 to 20 years to mature, yet it did not deter Kepa 
who says it is an investment for his family. I've planted over a thousand yasi in my farm and it's through hard work. I know age is catching up on me but I don't want to regret anything that I've done and I will do it for the betterment of my village and my family members who will come after me. Kepa says while the trees are still growing, he is on the lookout for the market as there is high demand for sandalwood overseas. I don't want to care about who benefits from my Yasi farming business. If God calls me before I harvest my farm, then I will be happy because I did this for my village of Nukuni and also to help them in the future. He says he realized how lucrative Yasi farming is after selling an old tree from his farm. I have sold only one Yasi and I have earned more than $2,000. But I will continue to plant more and let God decide everything for me. But I know for a fact that I am doing a good deed that will last long in many years to come. Sandalwood oil is extracted from the woods for use. Both the wood and the oil produce a distinctive fragrance that has been highly valued for centuries. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Successful Fijians was brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Coming up in sports, Ryan keeps rival teams guessing. And Fiji under 23 gaining valuable lessons in Spain tour. All that and more after the break. Bula, I'm Duri from Nasinu Market. My choice is simple, Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Sayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Raki Raki. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandi. I love listening to Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back, this is FBC Sports. For the phone, Fiji 7's coach Ben Ryan is not afraid to experiment with the players he has selected for the next two legs of the World 7 Series. The majority of the players are able to play multiple positions across the field, something Ryan will be looking to exploit in Wellington next weekend. Talendo Dakataka reports. Sevuloni Modenadangi's size, strength and speed makes him a viable option at wing, according to Ben Ryan. Relatively known in the local arena as a forward, Modenadangi is just one of several players in the team who can easily slot into multiple positions across the field. At the moment we're looking at him as an outside back, as a winger, but as his um, development continues, then he's, he's certainly an option in the forwards as well. So uh, I think one of the major plus points of this team and we just talked on the forwards but our backs as well they can play a number of positions it's so important when we come to te technical and tactical changes Ryan's plan is to keep opposing teams guessing as to the makeup of his lineup depending on who we're facing and then within the games as well and then if we get any sightings or any injuries or any illness we have that options and that flexibility so every position you look on we can probably fill it two or three deep within the 12 players and that's um, a big advantage that probably is greater than any other team on the series. The modern game of sevens is such that sometimes it cannot be won on talent and fitness alone, and such strategies may prove to be the difference between winning and losing. Talent or the Kataka, FBC Sports. Warden's Green claimed the Citizen Sevens Rugby Tournament at Suva Grammar School yesterday after defeating Uluina Kaubaba 17-5 in the Cup Final. The men in green disposed of tournament favourites Ratu Felice in the Cup semi-final 14-7, while Uluina Kao beat Warden's goal 12-0. Coral Co. 7th champions Felice had to settle for the play title after beating the breakthrough side 19-7. Warden's green collected $3,000 for the title win. The Fiji Under-17 football side defeated New Caledonia 3-2 to claim the bronze medal in the OFC Under-17 Women's Championship in the Cook Islands. This was Fiji's first appearance in the regional tournament, which is a qualifier for the FIFA Under-17 World Cup in Jordan in September. 
The Fiji Table Tennis Association is expecting a bigger turnout in its local competitions later in the year. There was a low turnout at the opening day of the Fiji Open yesterday, which started with the under-12 to under-15 grade games. Yes, uh, we would have loved to see more kids. Um, I think uh, with the back-to-school um, um, period coming, uh, coming up this, uh, during the first week, I think a lot of people are focused on going back to school. So it's a pity we couldn't get the numbers we were expecting. The Fiji Table Tennis Open is a week-long competition which will end next Saturday at Lothala Bay. The Manchester United football side was booed off the field after suffering a 1-0 loss to Southampton in the English Premier League. Replacement Charlie Austin headed home a free kick in the 87th minute in an otherwise dull match, handing the Red Devils their fourth loss in five games. Sergio Aguero scored twice to rescue Manchester City in a 2-2 draw at West Ham. The title challengers twice fell behind two goals and needed Aguero to bail them out with a penalty and a late equaliser. And in other games, league leaders Leicester defeated Stoke 3-0, Tottenham beat Crystal Palace 3-1, Manchester City played to a 2 all draw with West Ham, Sunderland and Bournemouth played to a one all draw, West Brom and Aston Villa could not score a goal in their tie this morning. Liverpool beat Norwich 5-4 and Newcastle beat Watford 2-1. Fine weather was experienced over most parts of the country again today. A trough of low pressure lies slow moving over the southern part of western Kiribati and extends westwards over Nauru and Banaba. Meanwhile, another trough is developing over northern Cooks. Generally, high temperatures were experienced all over the country. Bay and Lambasa were on 33 degrees, Suva, Nandi and Lotoka recorded 32 degrees and Sabu Sabu was on 31. Forecast to midnight tomorrow, brief showers over the southwestern parts and interior of the larger islands. An outlook for Tuesday, no major changes expected. And recapping the main stories, government accuses the Fiji Trades Union Congress of continuing to thwart industrial relations in Fiji by demanding to be the only union represented on the Employment Relations Advisory Board. PM reminds disciplined forces to work within the law and tropical cyclone Ula leaves $70,000 bill in Southern Lao Group. And on to this week's poll question and we are asking, was back to school shopping cheaper this year? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizensize at fbc.com.fj or share with us via Facebook page FBC News or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Akusita Tale. Good night. I'm Sarah. I'm from Tawa and I love listening to Today FM, Today FM Rock. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Ghana Tong. I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, today FM rocks. My name is Benasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Ulamila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.